Oh my goodness. Hello, Popo. My cat just plooped, like fell down just now, right next to me. I think she can hear the sound of my voice brewing. And she decides that she's going to just hang out with me. But, of course, she doesn't sit on my lap. Um, she just meows at me and says, I love you. And then I hate you and then runs off. Anyway, today I decided I'm going to try something a little different. Um, I ended up really enjoying the last three or four bottles that I've tried. Um, I still have a bunch of bottles left from the Kentucky trip that I still haven't managed to open up because I have a lot of stuff open right now and I kind of want to save them for a special occasion uh, and I'm itching to open up the the four roses like oh my god I'm itching to do it uh, but it's just opening up the space to do it in my cabinet so I thought you know I have a couple different bottles that I haven't drank in a little while and I was saying such nice things about all these other whiskeys. Um, I'm going to go over ones that I did not like on first taste. Uh, and I thought, you know, this is a good idea of what I enjoy and what I kind of contrast with my flavor profile. Um, so the two ones that I have today, this one is a Larceny Barrel Proof. Uh, this is the B523, famously snubbed by Fred Minnick in his top 100 last year. Somehow A123 and C923 Larceny made it to the top five. Top five. Mind you, Elijah Craig C923, the bourbon, made it to the top 10. I think it was like number nine. But, I, I, I mean, and then, okay. But anyway, B523, Everybody said it was like, oh, it's the best larceny they've ever made. Oh, it's so complex. Oh, it's amazing. I tried it. Mixed reviews. I've gone through about about two thirds or about a third of it now. Mixed reviews. Uh, and then this one over here actually is a bit of an oddity. I I have barely sipped away at this, uh, as you can see. And it's funny, when I did purchase this one, it was at a farmer's fair uh, in my parents' town. And it's only about half an hour, 20 minutes away from me, about 10 minutes away from their house. And it is, um, I'll even say the brand, it's Sourland Mountain Spirits. Apparently they make a really good gin, but they have also dipped their toes in straight bourbon whiskey. They do single barrels. You can commission them. Um, a local liquor store actually has a single barrel of their of a wheat whiskey, like a weeded bourbon. Um, and it's the same guys that pick the Survivor Barrel and a bunch of my other store picks that I love. Uh, so for $35, I was thinking about purchasing it. However, uh, and it's like 126 proof too. However, it's only 375 mil. And these guys have only been producing less than five, six years. They just released this distillery exclusive bottled in bond. I think this is batch two, bottle 222, last year or the year before. So they, they haven't been producing very much. Uh, but I thought, you know what, what's the best way to encourage them to innovate? What's the best way to get some more aged barrels on the product line, buy the whiskey, try it. Uh, I did have the opportunity of trying this bourbon before I enjoyed uh, the purchasing of this bottle. Uh, and I liked it at first taste. But uh, when I brought it home, I cracked it open. Uh, there was a metallic tone to it that steered me clear. And ever since then, I've, I've kind of just not bothered with it. I figured I'd give it some time to let it age a little bit with the oxidization. And maybe, and mind you, this was very early on in 
when I was trying whiskey for the first time outside of cocktails. So I just don't know if it was my palate. Uh, but apparently, according to Fred Minnick, making a bottled and bond product is a huge milestone for a whiskey company. Uh, these guys seem reasonably uh, determined to get a good product out there. I haven't bought anything else that they've produced, um, and I haven't really seen any big, beautiful bottles that they've produced. I haven't been to the distillery in a while. Uh, actually, I've never been. And I thought I would give this one a shot because I wasn't uh, the biggest fan of it. I'm, I'm going to try it tonight. And then uh, I'm going to try this B523, which... I'm going to try to think this one by every measure is not going to taste as good as this, but you never know. Let's give it a sip. Okay. So that's a little bit better than I remember. There's still that metallic hint of metallic, uh, paint thinner note on this bourbon. But actually, I'm going to just describe that more now that I'm a little bit further down my whiskey journey as like a deep, vibrant tobacco note and star anise. Deep, deep star anise and tobacco. Mm. Think Concord grape jelly. Uh, like the cheap stuff. I'm getting a little bit of toffee, no caramel, not a sweet, sweet nose, but a savory, punchy nose. <sighs> yeah, this is a little bit better than I remember because when I first smelled it, it smelled like drainer cleaner. And now I'm getting a little bit more nuance out of it. Um, plus, I'm sure it helps. It's been open for at least a year, and I've been haven't really been poking at it. I've tried a lot of other bourbons since then, so maybe that is the reason why we're getting such a, a such a, a change in the profile. I have changed. <gasps> oh my god! It's amazing. <laughs> oh my god! <laughs> I can't even believe myself. All right, I'm gonna try it. Let's see how it goes. You know what? That's a lot better than I remember. Mouthfeel is okay. Really just Middle of the road, not viscous, not thick. It kind of stays right in the middle of your palate. It doesn't spread out. I'm still getting a little bit of a finish here. Mm. Very light, weak finish. Not much flavor, but I could definitely feel it. Honey, ginger, cinnamon, tobacco, lots of tobacco. Honey, ginger, cinnamon, lots of tobacco. Star anise, peppercorns. A little bit of toffee, but this is not a sweet bourbon. This is more of like a... Um, Trying to think of a word that goes with lukewarm or tepid or middle of the road or right on the fence between sweet and a savory. I would almost think that this is a rye, of like a very, very sweet rye rather than a um, spicy bourbon. And I'm not saying that's a bad thing. 
And it makes me wonder what this would taste like if it wasn't four years old, if it was like eight years old or nine. But so far, this is a lot better than what I thought it was, okay? I'm not getting any of the Concord grape notes, or the Concord grape jelly notes on the nose. Oh, the palate. That's a little disappointing. Okay. Now that my palate's getting a little bit used to it, definitely getting that cinnamon hot, like a cinnamon hot spice to it. The flavors aren't like exploding everywhere. I'd call it, you know, passable. I'd call it passable. I could drink this. Um, it would probably taste better in a cocktail than neat. And I don't think that's a real problem. I just prefer to drink it neat. We might try it with a little bit of water there finish nothing to write home about it just dissipates very quickly i don't really taste anything it's not long lasting uh you know i'll just say it doesn't leave much of an impression this whiskey and i think it would really benefit from more hours more practice um or you know hours uh, um, of thought more practice on the barreling process, maybe just you know really nailing down what their flavor profile is going to be, and um, try adding a little bit of fruit. That that's what I I I love fruit in my bourbons, um, but that's that's something in this bourbon that I'm not getting at all is no fruit notes and it's not desserty. Uh, it kind of feels like. A few random ingredients tossed into a bowl and you're trying to tell me that it's some sort of take on a old classic favorite but when I ask you to give me specifics you're not even quite sure which one it is just that you made it and it's yours and this is your creation um, plus this was like $50 for 375 mils um, this is one of those whiskeys that I would want to like give to people to see what they think because maybe I'm crazy. Maybe, maybe I have no idea what I'm tasting here and there's something about this bourbon that's delicious in its own unique way. Uh, but I'm just going to say for now, okay, on to the larceny. This I'm kind of excited about. It's been a little while since I've tried it. Oh, compared to this, that smells like heaven. <laughs> honey, honey and cloves. Sweet bread. Mmm, toffee, cinnamon, spice. Some oak, lots of oak. Mmm. Dolce de leche sauce, vanilla. Mmm. Now this is sweet. You can smell the sweetness popping out of the glass on this one. You can really smell that sweetness. Uh, it's a weeded bourbon, so it's bound to be a little bit more sugary. But uh, this, I'm liking a lot more than this. The nose is just there, it's pungent. Mm. I haven't talked about the legs on either of these. Thick. Reasonably viscous, got a nice ring to it, kind of just moseys its way down the glass, slow and steady, quite nice, and it's got a beautiful amber color, I don't know if you can see that, but that's beautiful. This one, um, it does leave a ring on the glass, and surprisingly, it's got... A nice coating. I mean, it it it's very. <laughs> this is compared to this super thick on on the legs. I mean, this is just like 
a snail, throwing a snail at a wall, this one. No figure. Appearances can be deceiving. Oh, it smells so good. It'll probably taste, I mean, this is barrel proof. This is bottled and bond. But... Right away, oak and honey. Soft, sweet cinnamon. Caramel. Fantastic mouthfeel. I'm getting hay. Straw. Buttercups. Like Reese's buttercups. Mm. It's just nutty. coats the palate. I like this a lot more than when I first had it. When I first had it, it tasted thin. It tasted way too sweet. I know this is sacrilege to all those Larceny fans out there, but I'm sorry. I'm just not a big Larceny fan. I prefer the Elijah Craig Barrel Proof and then the Bernheim. I just like the Bernheim better than I like the Larceny. Elijah Craig will always have a special place in my heart. I think it's the best stuff that they make. Um, recently, with the A124 batch, I haven't tried any of the Larcenies this year. But here's the thing. With uh, Elijah Craig Bell Proof, I know that's going to be really good. And it's only $10 more than this, okay? The Bernheims have been getting better. The Bernheims have been getting better. And I like the mouthfeel and the sweetness. And I just love that contrast between that heavy, heavy, almost like chewing caramel sweetness of the Bernheims. And then you get that peppercorn crackling fire finish. And it's just a spicy wench. Um, and might I add, at the You Do Bourbon Experience, somehow they managed to place a blueberry note, like a blueberry flavor note in that Bernheim that they had. That would have been the one we took home. Okay? That would have been the one that we took home if the Elijah Craig Barrel Proof Y624 wasn't a monster. And just absolutely stunning. And with the Larcenies, I, I think they're just too sweet for me. Uh, this one does a great job with uh, tempering it with oak. And with the C923 Larceny, I like that one more than I like this one on first taste because I felt like the C923 Larceny had a lot more oak and dark sea salt caramel to it. Um, and it wasn't as bright as the B523. I lean towards deep, dark, sweet, and uh, like... Heavy oak with uh, a fruit undertone or fruit everywhere, uh, and the, the oak just supports it. But I'm a fan of the dessert bourbons. I'm a fan of the oak bourbons. I'm a fan of the fruit bourbons. Uh, but the light and sweet, the bright ones, like the really sweet, weeded bourbons, I feel like they're unbalanced. <laughs> they just don't have enough oak influence, or they don't have enough fruit. Uh, they're just super dessert forward and it's a lot like having trace leche cake perfect example actually of this b523 trace leche cake in a glass and the finish just goes on and on but it's like the difference between having like a chocolate lava cake with vanilla ice cream and caramel sauce on there and then you get some like strawberries and put that on top all that goes really well right you get the trace leche cake and if you start pouring caramel over it and then you take some strawberries and cut it on top it's like no no, no the trace leche cake already has the milk it already has the condensed milk it has the milk icing it's all already been soaked into the cake and now you're just pouring more sugar on it and then what are the, the fruit, what is that going to do? 
it's just gonna add even more sugar on it. Um, whereas with the chocolate, at least you get like the uh, Elijah Craig Barrel Proof, the chocolate, the, the chocolate lava cake, you're getting um, the rich savory chocolate, you're getting the sickly sweet um, uh, caramel, you're getting the light carb loaded sweet ice cream that creates a flavorful texture. You got the, um, the strawberries that just cut the sweetness a little bit with a little bit of acidity and a little bit of um, uh, different flavor textures to it. Uh, whereas I, I think the Larcenies, where I have a problem with them, are that they're just way too dessert forward and they don't lean into any heavy fruit notes. They don't balance as well. Plus, once you've had one Larceny, I think you just kind of had them all. Um, I wouldn't say that they're, you know, there's stunning differences between each one of the batches. And that's a credit to uh, Heaven Hill. They went through that same problem with Elijah Craig, which was like a liquid candy bar in a glass. Delicious. But once you've had, you know, for about, what, that two, three year stretch, once you've had one of those, you know, you kind of, you don't, you don't really need to buy every batch, right? Because you already know what it's going to taste like. It tastes pretty good. And if I run out, I'm definitely going to get another one and be happy because it's almost the same exact flavor profile. Same thing with the Larcenies. Now, if the price difference between the Elijah Craig Barrel Proof and the Larceny was such that, let's say the ECBP is $80 and this Larceny was $40 or $45, I'd pick up the Larceny every single day um, just because it's that good at half the price i'm sold but in my area the larcenies are usually on the lowest 65 dollars 65 dollars is the lowest you'll find them and typically 70 to 80 dollars so the same price as an ecbp these are only six to eight years old the ecbp can be 10 to 12 to hour old please not below 10 for at least another two years, ECBP, please. I don't want to see that happen to you. Um, even though I do like it when they blend the single barrels, I think that adds a lot to the flavor, but that's a little too early. I'm rambling. Uh, essentially, the winner here is Larceny Barrel Proof. Let's add some water. See how that does it. I mean, the differences here is night and day. Of course, it's barrel proof. This is 100. But where I think an interesting comparison between these two is it's two different extremes. Uh, on one hand, you have this Sourland Mountain Spirit, which is kind of a hodgepodge of different savory flavors that are laced with sweetness that could almost be mistaken for a rye, except... It doesn't quite have the characteristics you're looking for in a good rye. Um, you know, like a, a little bit of fruit, some spice, some great mouthfeel, the sweetness to it, but it's, it's savory. Um, and those herbal notes that kind of lurk around the outside edges and sometimes burst their way through like a, like a tuft of grass. Uh, this just is a bit of a hodgepodge. And when I add some water, even more tobacco. And then you got the Larceny, which is so far on the other end of the spectrum in sweetness that it's hard to pick out those individual notes of savoriness that contrast the sweetness into layers. Uh, and I do get some complexity. This is a great pour. I could enjoy sipping on this and it's not a bad barrel proof. Uh, just not my flavor, just not my flavor. Um, thankfully, you know, when I do buy the Larcenies, um, with this one, because I heard such great things, I did get two bottles. So this is the one that I have open and then I have a backup. Um, I don't know, probably I'll eventually trade it for something if I could find somebody that's a real like bourbon head. Um, but on this spectrum, it's just too sweet. It's too sweet for me as a weeded bourbon um, and I'm not a big fan of the weeders anyway. Um, hmm. A little bit of water just opens this up.
Okay, I'm almost getting like a hot apple spice pear. A little bit. But not enough to make me sway in my opinion. And with this one, big deep tobacco. If you like tobacco in your bourbon, this would be a great cigar bourbon. This would be really good if you had a cigar. All right, that's actually a little better. When you add a little bit of water to this one, it gets much sweeter. And the mouthfeel just suffers. It, it turns watery. It's, it's extremely watery, very fast. It gets sweeter and more mild. I'd love to see what a barrel proof version of this is, or if they were to finish it in some kind of like sherry cask or cognac cask or brandy, um, or uh, what's the, uh, or like a VDN cask, just something to give it some citrus and some sweetness. Uh, without sacrificing the nice mouth feel and uh, the tobacco leaf. Uh, that's, that's one thing that I'm not getting is a sweet tobacco leaf. And I like sweet tobacco leaves. Mm. Yeah. A little water makes it much more palatable. But I think it suffers in the long run. Still, for about 50 bucks, uh, I think this is a good thing to support a local business craft whiskey you know it takes time it takes time to make good whiskey anybody could tell you that and it takes a lot of skill a lot of practice and here's another nitpick i have i don't like the cork it's not a real cork it's rubber but it had great great pop to it uh, but it takes time it takes time to make good whiskey, and you got to support a local distillery to see what they come up with. You know, time will tell, and apparently they're quite well diversified. They have award-winning gin. If you've never tried their uh, Sour and Mountain Spirits gin, amazing. It's delicious. The, uh, they have a cranberry vodka, seasonal, <sighs> out of this world good. Uh, but they're trying to flex their muscle into uh, bourbon, and I want to see them succeed. So I don't regret purchasing this bottle. I think this is a great addition to the collection. I just kind of like an oddity, like an oddball uh, whiskey that I could share with people. And larceny, larceny, larceny. I have not bought either release this year, and I didn't get the A123 release last year. Um... I'll tell you what already, I, I like the Elijah Craig A123 better. I haven't even tasted the Larson A123, and uh, the ECBP 123 was great. I loved it. Mm. Yeah. I can't complain. It's really good. Final thoughts? Anything that I want to say, uh, probably the next video, I will try either a Four Roses store pick, or I might do uh, another New Jersey distillery, or I'm sorry, uh, Rectifier by the name of, I mean, there's only one of them, Penelope. Uh, I haven't tried a lot of their bourbon whiskey, and there's store picks aplenty in this area for Penelope bourbon. And now that they're producing some uh, great bottles from uh, MGP, or I'm sorry, Luxro, uh, I'm excited to see what they do in the future. But I have two bottles from Penelope that I quite enjoyed, which I think I'll review uh, the first one was the uh, Penelope Nine Year, which I thought was just delightful. Delightful. I bought a backup bottle of that. And then the other one, actually I do not have a backup of, and I wish I bought one, is the American 15 Year Light Whiskey that they produced. 
that was good. That's like napalm, marzipan, almond butter, just toffee, caramel, and that that just is like a fizzy bourbon drink. It's just good. That stuff is good. I would, I really want to try drinking that on camera. But that's another story for another day. We're going to say goodbye to our friend Larsony here. <sighs> Just didn't match up. Never had a chance, but didn't match up. And this, time will tell if I purchase another bottle of Larsony in the, the near future. Um, if Elijah Craig Barrel Proof goes down the tubes, I probably will. Um, if Four Roses stops making unbelievable barrel proof whiskey, if you can find it, uh, I will probably definitely invest in Larceny. And if Bernheim really falls off a cliff or they discontinue it, we'll see what happens. But for now, mm. thank you very much. I can't wait to smell these glasses in the morning tomorrow and have a wonderful night. Good night.